Hello, welcome back. I now want to talk to you about something that's called Integrator Windup. Uh, you may well have uh, been introduced to this um, concept um, in a previous control course. And, and this is a very common nonlinear phenomenon that happens when you have saturations in your feedback loop. Um, so if you have a combination of saturations and integral action. And uh, so I just want to introduce uh, the, the concepts uh, now, and then we'll look at methods to compensate for them. This is extremely widespread. So this is a kind of nonlinear behavior that you will frequently come up against in practice. So it's very important to know how to deal with it. So uh, the basic setup um, is that we have some uh, system with transfer function g uh, that we wish to control. Um, maybe we, we've had to linearize it, perhaps, so we're operating around some uh, some nominal, nominal equilibrium point. Um, but the inputs to our system are subject to saturation. So this is very typical when, for example, you have motors or any type of control actuator that's got a limited amount of um, authority or limits on how much force or how much of anything it can apply. Um, so it, it may be that for small inputs, your actuator just, you get out what you ask for. Um, but if you ask for too much, it just gives you as much as it can. Uh, so for large inputs here, it just produces its maximum output. Um, and so this is our saturation block here. So we're sort of really talking about trying to control this system here where we have some saturation on the inputs that we can apply and then some other uh, dynamics describing our process. Um, so what can happen here? Well, if we take a typical control architecture, um, so we have our reference signal here, we have a negative feedback, we have an error here, and we feed this into our, say, PID controller. And integral action, as you've seen before, is an extremely useful tool. Um, it allows you to track set points with uh, no steady state errors. You can eliminate constant disturbances. Um, it, it's an extremely useful addition to any uh, controller that you might design to regulate uh, um, a system. However, it interplays in quite a nasty way uh, with saturations, um, as we will now see. And so it's important to compensate for this, and that's what we'll talk about at the next lecture. Um, but for now, we're just going to sort of focus on explaining this wind-up phenomena that you get when you have integral action and you have a saturation here. So it helps to kind of remind ourselves what the equations for a PID controller are. Well, you typically set this input uh, V, and it consists of three terms. And there's a number of different ways to implement this. We'll just focus on uh, one uh, similar concept applies, no matter how you go about implementing this uh, PID. And so you, you'll have a proportional term K, um, and this is proportional to the error signal here. And then you also have a derivative term, and this normally has, um, an you add an additional, so K is our control parameter for our proportional term. TD is our derivative term parameter. Um, you often make this act on minus dy dt. So, so strictly speaking, this block diagram isn't really correct. For it to be correct, the PID would have to act on E, so it wouldn't be allowed to act on Y. In practice, it's very common uh, to make your PID act on uh, Y dot rather than E dot. Um, given any constant reference, there's no difference between using E or Y. Um, this is just something that's done more commonly in practice. So apologies for the slight inconsistency here, but um, it's I prefer these types of pictures because they, they they have a bit more meaning rather than just having some block with lots of arrows going in and you're not really sure what causes what. Um, so we have our derivative term, proportional derivative, and finally the i in PID is our integral term, and this is the thing that's going to cause trouble with the saturation. And this, you have a term that depends 
on the in the integral of the error. So we uh, you typically run this in an online uh, fashion. So you continually update this integral by adding in a little extra slice at each point in time. Uh, but we, we integrate the error signal that we see and we apply some control uh, input that's proportional to that. So this is the form of our um, PID controller. And now let's just try and think about what might happen if we change set points uh, with, for our system. So first of all, let's just do the case with no saturation. Um, and quite a typical response might look something like this. So um, as before, before we're operating at some reference point here, and now we decide we want to change operating point. And we'll be very blunt with how we do it. Um, so we try and change operating point. And if there's no saturation and we've done a good job designing our PID controller, something that might happen is before we were operating quite happily here, now the input, uh, the reference changes, and um, so this error signal becomes non-zero. The controller kicks into action and starts trying to drive this error signal to zero, and um, we might go up something like this, and then maybe we'll oscillate around a little bit, and then we'll settle down. So this will be y of t, and on our picture, this distance here, this is e of t. Um, so no saturation, fine. What might start to happen if we include saturation? Well, it might be that in order to maintain such a, a steep slope, um, so the control input that's driving such a steep increase might be enough to saturate our um, our actuator. So we'll be asking for more and expecting to be getting more, but we won't get it because it's beyond uh, the capabilities of our components. So what might happen if we do this instead? So now we're looking, uh, let's say, let's label this so with saturation. And the reference is just as before, something like that. Um, but now, when we try and apply our control system here, it starts asking for signals, V of T, um, that are too large. And so they get capped out, and the effect of this will be to just severely slow down the rate at which y rises. We, we still get this big error. Our controller responds by trying to drive us as hard as it can towards the set point, uh, but the, the actuators just aren't strong enough. And so we get some rise that starts to look like this. So we're much, uh, much slower. So how does this affect things? Well, um, the error is still given by this uh, signal here. So I'm actually going to draw out another set of axes below where we plot the error. Um, so the error, it started off when we had our, it started off as zero, then we changed R, and then oh, during this period, if this is Y, then the error slowly decreased. So what does that mean for the various terms in our feedback policy? And in particular, what does it mean by the time we get close to our desired reference point? Well, by the time we get close to our desired reference point, well, E of T starts to get small, so we're not asking for any more. Um, the, the proportional term in our controller is not asking for anything else. So when we get close to where we want to be, this term's going to zero. That's good, uh, because when we get there, we want to stay there. Similarly, this term that depends on y dot, well, y dot is not changing at all here. Um, and then 
yeah, so, so y dot is nice and benign, so this term here will be small. Um, and in particular, if we flattened out, um, then this term here would be, yeah, so, so this term's no problem. But um, how about this term? And, and this is where this wind-up phenomenon occurs. And I probably could have drawn this, this picture slightly more exaggerated, so imagine this is even slower. But what is this term here? Well, we have something that depends on the integral of e. And you see, we were really slow to get up to our reference here. And during all of that time, we just kept on integrating up the error. And this area got bigger and bigger and bigger. So what does e of, um, so what does the integral look like? It looks something like, um, it starts off, there's no integral, and then it gets bigger and bigger, and it sort of flattens out. So this is what integral e of two or d tau looks like. And so you see that we arrive at our reference point. These two, the control is kind of pretty happy um, with respect to the proportional and the, the derivative term. It's saying, OK, we're at the reference. Let's just ease off the control. But the integral term has just spent all of this long period of time just integrating up and getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And the consequence of that is, even when we've driven our system to our new reference, we've, we've still got a huge control term here. And this term is huge because it's just been integrating up the error for such a long period of time. And it's taken such a long period of time because our actuators were saturating. And so what ends up happening is even though we've got to our new reference point, we're still applying a huge control input. And so actually, we just keep on going. Uh, our controller keeps, just keeps on driving us up until we've produced enough negative area to sort of balance these two things out. And then this term here will die off. And then we'll start to come back down. And it might even oscillate around a little while. And it's sort of a fairly typical curve would... Uh, be be something like this. And so this is the phenomena of integrator wind-up, and it's caused by the combination of um, saturation and integral action. Uh, you, you actually get similar, or arguably even worse, problems if you have unstable plants. And this is related to ideas of region of attraction. Another way to think about saturation is that when you ask for too large a control input, the, if this thing saturates, it's not varying anymore. So it's as if uh, you go open loop. So if you're operating in the saturated regime, there is no feedback. There's just like a constant input. And now you can sort of see why that's a problem if your system is unstable. So if you have an unstable system and you're applying constant inputs, it will just fall away. And because the actuation is not able to get any bigger to try and compensate for this, it will never be able to pull it back. So We've just sort of described the phenomena of integrator windup as extremely common because you want to use integral action for many other reasons, but it can interplay very badly with saturations. Uh, but saturations can also cause trouble um, in other settings as well, particularly when you have unstable plants. Um, so that's sort of a, a brief introduction to issues caused by saturation and instability either in the controller or the plant, with a special focus on integrator instability um, and this phenomena of integrator wind-up. And we'll now look at um, standard methods to compensate for integrator wind-up.